At some point in business, we have to change mentalities. We have to go from being the operator to being the business owner, going from the one that does it all to the one that strategizes. And that transition for service businesses happen typically at the 10K per month mark. And that's when you start needing systems to help you out. And from my experience, Notion is a great tool for doing that. I've been helping businesses for five years to implement their systems in Notion. And I have found out that there are eight skills that differentiate systems that work from Frankenstein systems that only require you more work to handle. So let's go with the first one, mapping out your processes before building anything in Notion. One of the main mistakes that I've seen business owners make is diving into Notion and start building their systems right away. It is impossible in Notion to map how your process should look like. Because remember, Notion is only the tool. It is not a system. You have to turn it into a system. And a system, it is only a set of processes that you always follow. So we need to define those first. And this is what I always do in maps like this one, where we are mapping the whole process from beginning to end with all the steps until the very end. So this is, to me, the first process that we have to systemize, the client delivery. And this is a client delivery process mapped out. So this will be, for me, the very first skill. Now, second one. I've called this purpose first, build later. Because if you've been using Notion, probably you have built some page that you go there and just feel overwhelmed by the look of it. Because you have a lot of data and you don't really know where to look at. Because too often, we tend to just cram every possible detail into one view because we think that that's productive, but that is not serving any purpose. So what do I do instead? First, I think, what is the purpose of this view? So for example, if I want to see the information of my leads, the people that haven't become clients yet, I don't want a table view showing me like all data from my clients and just to see everything. I want to see something very specific. So in this first view, the only thing that I want to see is the pipeline, and that is it. And for example, the only things that I, that I want to see is how long they've been in the, in the pipeline, when I contacted him, when do I have to follow up, and where the lead came from. And those are the only things. I don't want to get overwhelmed by too much information. And then I have different views for different purposes. So this to me makes everything as simple as possible. Now, the third skill is knowing how to use team spaces properly. Why? Because once you start using Notion with a team, having the team spaces properly defined is going to help you with user permissions. Team spaces are the best way to manage permissions in Notion because we can assign permissions to every team space at once. So this means that all the permissions that manage these pages over here can be managed through the team space itself. So the idea will be to create member groups inside of Notion, which we can do by going to the settings and going to members and go to groups. And here we can have the different member groups inside of these groups. We can have some members inside of them. So, and then we can assign those groups to each of the team spaces. For example, here I have a team space for the done for you projects. These are the projects that we handle with clients and I have the service delivery group over here. So this means that whenever I'm going to hire a new person that is in the service delivery department, I just need to add this person to the service delivery group and he's going to inherit all the permissions where the service delivery group is added. Now, skill number four, knowing where to place databases. In Notion, everything is powered by databases and we have to be very mindful where we place them because this is going to tell Notion who gets access to them. So in my experience, the best way to do this is inside of each team space, I have a databases page. So this means that all the databases that are powering the rest of the pages are inside of here. And then in those pages, I am only using linked view of databases, which is a special type of block inside of Notion that can take the information from an actual database and give us the possibility to filter the data so we see what we want to see. Because if your databases are scattered all around your workspace, there is no possibility in Notion to see where they are. So unless we give that structure ourselves, the workspace is going to become unmanageable. And even you run the risk of your team member deleting some of those databases that contain a lot of crucial data. So if we can keep them separate from everything else, much better. Now, skill number five, and this comes from mistakes that I've seen my clients do before they came to work with me, which is using linked databases instead of creating new databases all the time. I have seen countless of times my clients creating a new task database for every new client that they onboard. This means that there is no central place for you to go see all your tasks. You will have to go into 
each of the clients to see what needs to get done. But that is not scalable and that is impossible to manage at a certain scale. But instead, my recommendation is to have one database only for tasks in this case. And then with the different filters, you can decide which tasks to show where. So for example, if you go to a client's page, you can filter that task database by your client. So you only see your client's tasks. Skill number six, and this is one that I always see my clients overlook before coming to work with me, because most of them have already suffered by their team members deleting something crucial from the system, and this can be prevented. This typically happens in databases where somebody creates a new property or somebody deletes a property, and this means that that property is deleted from the whole workspace. That skill is knowing that there is a permission called can edit content. If we go to the share button over here, you can see that we can choose here the can edit content permission. This means that these people are going to have access to the entire database, but they can only use the database, use the infrastructure that I have built. They cannot create properties, they cannot delete properties, they can only use it. And that is exactly what we want. We have to separate the people that build the system from the people that actually uses the system. And they need different permissions. So just make sure that everybody that needs to use the system have this permission. Okay, skill number seven is using the custom layouts. As your system grows, your properties inside of your databases are going to grow as well. And they will quickly start to feel very messy and very disorganized. You will open a task page, for example, and get lost in the myriad properties that you have. And if your team, for example, misses one of those properties and they don't enter some information in there, that information can get lost. It may create inefficiencies, like people asking for that, people trying to look for that or, or creating it again. But this is where custom layouts come into rescue. So this is an example of my task database, this one task that I have for a client. And we can see here at the top the main information that I always have, then some groups of properties over here that separates them and makes them visible and easy to reach. You can do so by just going to customize layout, click on the property group, and here where it says add section, these are the actual groups that you can see over here or over here. And then you will just have to move properties around so they are in the right group. And the final skill is knowing how webhooks work and how to use them in Notion. This is the ultimate power move for your Notion system. It's what is going to allow you to trigger automations that affect all the tools right from Notion. For example, this is the dashboard that I have for every new lead that comes my way. So if after the call they seem interested, I only have to click this button over here and automation is going to create a payment link for the client and send him an email with that payment link and some custom text. And everything is triggered by this button only. And how is this done? Well, there is an automation in the back end over here that whenever the status is this one, it sends the lead information to a webhook. A webhook is simply a URL address that another program, in my case, Sapier, but you can also use make.com, for example, and those softwares are gonna receive that information. And there you will have an automation that in this case, creates the payment link and sends the email to the person. This feature is what allows us to not only have a system in Notion, but to have an automated system in it. And to me, this is the ultimate skill to really reach true business freedom. Because to me, systems is not about efficiency or growing your output, which they are also, but this is all about having the freedom that we wanted whenever we started our business. Freedom from endless tasks, freedom from chaos, and freedom to enjoy life, spend time with your loved ones, etc. And if this video was of interest, YouTube is going to recommend you another video over here so you can keep watching. That is it for this video, guys, and as always, hasta la próxima.